you already know what are levers levers are simple machines which help make our work easier and these are rigid straight or bent bar which is capable of movement about a fixed axis we already know what are class 1 levers in class 1 lever the fulcrum is located in between the effort and the load so this example in which a man is using a straight bar to lift off he heavy boulders he is using a class 1 lever here the fulcrum is located here that is a fixed point he is applying the force of effort here and the load is the boulder which is being lifted off using a lever so can you tell me is a pair of scissors a class 1 lever first of all tell me is it a lever or not yes it has two rigid bars like this it helps make our work easier so it's a simple machine also it is fixed about a point this point so it can be said to be a lever also you see this is a fulcrum it's located here where is the effort being applied on the handle of the scissors so the effort is applied on the handles so effort is here where will be the load well you use a pair of scissors to cut paper cloth and other material so the load would be acting here like this so see the fulcrum is located in between the load and the effort so yes it will be a class 1 lever so this fulcrum you see the rotation or movement takes place about this fixed axis and here it is located in between the effort and the load so it can be rightly said to be a class 1 lever okay so what do you see here it's a claw hammer which is used to lift off loose screws from furniture so is this claw hammer a class 1 lever well first to determine if any simple machine or any le lever is a class 1 lever or not we need to determine the positions of the fulcrum the load and the effort so let's determine the positions you can see when we use a claw hammer we apply the effort here that is on the handle we apply the effort here where will be the fulcrum at this point here will be the fulcrum and the load that is the screw which is being lifted off using a claw hammer will be the load it will be acting in a downward direction so again you see the fulcrum is located in between the effort and the load so yes this is also a class 1 lever so this is how you determine whether a lever is a class 1 lever or not so what do you see here using a spoon to open the lid of a jar in this case the spoon is helping us do the work easily because we cannot open the lid with our bare hands so in this case the spoon can be correctly said to be a simple machine or a lever because you know a spoon is a rigid bar which is bent at the bottom so a spoon can be said to be a lever now whether it is a class 1 lever or not so let's determine the position of the fulcrum load and the effort here you can see we apply effort on the spoon here so we apply effort or e on the spoon here this point that is the part of the spoon which is touching the lid is fixed at a position so this can be correctly said to be a fulcrum what about the load this lid which is we are trying to lift up will be the load so you see the these positions the fulcrum is located in between the effort and the load so a spoon which is used to open the lid of a jar can be said to be an example of a class 1 lever so see here the fulcrum is located in between the effort and the load so it's a class 1 lever so from the law of levers we know that the mechanical advantage of a machine can be defined as the ratio of the effort arm 
to the loader so the mechanical advantage of a lever is equal to the ratio of the length of its effort arm to the length of its load arm so in case of class 1 levers like the claw hammer or the plier you see the effort arm is generally longer than the load arm we know effort arm is the distance of the point of application of effort to the fulcrum and the load arm is the distance where the load acts to the fulcrum so the load arm here is much lesser than the effort arm you see in the case of plier also effort arm is longer than load arm so in such cases what will be the mechanical advantage well if effort arm is larger or greater than the load arm the mechanical advantage will be greater than 1 now we know that mechanical advantage can also be defined as a ratio of the load is to effort so if mechanical advantage is greater than 1 obviously we can see the load by effort ratio is greater than 1 or we can bring effort on this side to prove that load is greater than effort so in cases of levers where the effort arm is larger than the load arm the load is generally greater than effort so what does it mean it means that we are using a smaller effort to lift up a heavier load so this means that these machines can be known as force multipliers because we apply a smaller force or a smaller effort in order to overcome a larger resistive force so what about the velocity ratio of these machines we know velocity ratio is the ratio of the displacement of effort to the displacement of load that is how much the effort is moving in order to move the load so if the effort arm is greater than the load arm so the displacement of effort will also be greater than the displacement of load so in such cases the velocity ratio would be greater than 1 so in these machines like the claw hammer or the plier and the speed the mechanical advantage is greater than 1 so they can be used like force multiplier but here the effort arm needs to be greater than the load arm therefore the velocity ratio becomes more than 1 now what about this this is a physical balance you know here the effort arm is equal to the load arm suppose we put a load on this plate and we put some weights on this plate in order to balance both of them so here the fulcrum will be this point which remains fixed so here is the fulcrum here will be the load and here will be the effort so this distance would be the load arm and this would be the effort arm so you can see from this image both the load arm and the effort arm are equal this is also a class 1 lever but unlike the previous example here the load arm is equal to the effort arm as we know that mechanical advantage is equal to the effort arm divided by the load arm and if the effort arm is equal to the load arm so from this expression you can understand the mechanical advantage would be equal to 1 now velocity ratio also you know is equal to the displacement of effort is to the displacement of load since both of them are equal so velocity ratio would also be equal to 1 so in this type of lever in which the effort arm is equal to the load arm the mechanical advantage as well as the velocity ratio is equal to 1 so in this type of class 1 lever where the effort arm is equal to the load arm is generally used for balancing the load with the effort or with weights and in these type of levers the mechanical advantage and the velocity ratio both are equal to 1 now coming back to the example of a pair of scissors we know a pair of scissors belong to class 1 lever where does the load act here at the ends of the blades when the blades cut through paper or cloth in this direction 
the effort acts at the handles of the scissors on both the handles in this direction. So where is the load arm and the effort arm in this case? We know effort arm is the distance from the point of application of effort till the fulcrum. The fulcrum is located in the middle. So this distance is the effort arm and the load arm is from the load till the fulcrum, this distance. So from this image you can understand the load arm is much greater or longer than the effort arm. So in these type of levers, the effort arm is shorter than the load arm. Therefore, the mechanical advantage will be lesser than 1. So in this type of lever, where the effort arm is shorter than the load arm, what will be the velocity ratio? You know that the velocity ratio is displacement of effort by displacement of load. Or we can incorporate the time factor here which will cancel out. So after incorporating the time factor, we get in the num numerator the velocity of effort, that is displacement of effort by time. So we get velocity of effort and in the denominator we get displacement of load by time, that is velocity of load. So as we know in this lever, the displacement of effort is lesser than the displacement of load, that is DE by DL is less than 1. So from here this expression also becomes less than 1. Velocity of effort by velocity of load also becomes less than 1. So from this expression we can understand that velocity of load is greater than the velocity of effort. So the velocity ratio becomes less than 1. Or DE by DL is less than 1. So why do we use such levers? Well, this is because to obtain a gain in speed. That is, if the velocity of effort is less, that is, you are moving the effort for a shorter distance and obtaining the velocity of load to be greater. That is, obtaining a larger movement of the load. So such machines help to obtain a gain in speed. This is why we use scissors to cut through paper or cloth because here we are moving the handle for a shorter distance but the blades move a longer distance. Such machines are also known as speed multipliers. Now let me tell you an interesting fact. In our body also a class 1 lever is present. Can you make a guess? Well, you see, the nodding action of head is also an example of class 1 lever. Can you locate the fulcrum, the load and the effort here? Well, these are the positions of the load, fulcrum and effort. From this animation, you can see that the fulcrum is located in between the load and the effort. So, the nodding action of head can also be an example of a class 1 lever.